truly, genuinely, people want to see change. Like anyone that goes into social work, the bottom line is they want to see change. They want to see a difference. They want to, um, they want to empower people to, to seek that change. I was a mental health therapist for a while, so uh, working with mostly school-aged kids and their parents who had some kind of diagnosis, a mental health diagnosis. And I also worked in child welfare, working with families who were struggling with parenting. I also worked at Catholic Social Services and Bissell Centre, so lots of different agencies to uh, support people more on the micro level. The work I do now is macro social work because I'm you know, doing uh, social policy development and uh, so that is uh, you know, a really important role, I think, of social workers. One of the things that I felt I learned through my career is you know, we always have that dual purpose of our profession, that it is um, supporting individuals, supporting families, but it's also looking at the larger systemic issues. And it's not one or the other, it's and both. And so uh, social workers uh, do both, you know, we're not only helping that individual, but we want to make sure that we're advocating, or in my privileged role now, I get to create social policies that actually are inclusive. And we know that if we have social policies that are inclusive, then there's less people to have to support. What I love about social work is it's very broad. You can do so many things. There's group settings, there's the community work that I do, there's the policy work. Uh, it's everything from these very small micro uh, to mezzo that's working in organizations to macro working in community and policy. One of the things I love is the miming. Happenstance that it, 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 I got to this place, um, uh, actually through my current work with the city of Lethbridge, we did these Pangea cafes. And so one of them was an entertainment based and uh, two of my colleagues asked, asked if I would mime at that and I thought, I've never mimed in my life and my one friend's like, you totally do man, you're always acting out and, and like very animated so I thought, okay. So I put on this outfit, I just had some clothes in the basement, threw on some black and white stuff, painted my face up with some Halloween and whatnot and people loved it. And, and so it was a, <clears throat> kind of a really cool way I, I felt uh, to take the social work piece and to integrate my personality, what I've learned from social work, and then to interact with people, to create a very empathetic and warm space for people just to, to relate. I said to my wife, Tammy, you know, I want to do this more. This is <laughs> just like a great feeling, you know? So I said, I need a name though. So she's like, she thought a bit, and first thing, you know, within a few seconds, Rufus. So there it was, Rufus was born. And so I created this trickster mentality and, and personality for Rufus and people were eating it up. And then my daughter started to really enjoy it and they wanted to learn. My youngest would just sit uh, beside me as I would put on my makeup and just watch and be so silent. She's never silent <laughs> at home. So this was astounding to me. And then she asked if I, if I could paint her face. So I did. And then they wanted to do some, some acting. So I taught them some basic miming moves and stuff. And then. Uh, we thought, well, let's do this. We became uh, this mime trio. They've only done a couple of events with me, but they're totally into it. And then they thought, they had a talent show in school last year. They wanted to do the miming. So we put this little skit together. It was a cool experience, because I got to share this, this unique, once in a lifetime opportunity with my daughters, where the whole school was like, just eyes on them. Our daughters struggle with, you know, um, some, my oldest daughter has Tourette's and that was a bit of an issue with her and her friends. And my youngest struggles with anxiety. And so to have an opportunity where they can like just be a part of a, a cool experience uh, with their school. <laughs> yeah, it was just totally amazing, totally amazing. And, and as a father, I was like, that's a memory we'll have forever. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like that, that, that's a way to just self-care, just warm the heart, fill the cup, fill the bucket, and that, that can keep you going for months.
went to a professional development presentation a long time ago and um, it was a woman presenting on animal assisted therapy which was something I'd never heard of before and she had three little dogs with her and she did a demonstration and then at the end of her conversation she said you know there's an organization in Edmonton called Dogs with Wings and sometimes their dogs don't make it all the way to the end to become a service dog and they have these beautifully trained dogs that people can apply to use and I wrote a proposal to them and by the time they came back to me and said okay we're really interested let's have a conversation because I talked about how I'd use a dog in my work as a school social worker. Dogs with Wings matched me with Freedom and he's a big black lab golden retriever cross but he looks like a black lab and he stayed with me for seven years I retired last summer and is now a pet at home and it was such an amazing experience that I went back to them and I said I know he's getting to the point where he's almost finished would you ever consider giving me another one and this summer they called up and said we think we have another match for you and Fernie joined me in November when I walk in the door with Fernie it's like oh Fernie's here <laughs> Fernie's here it's like being the mom of a new baby nobody sees the mom you see the baby I'm practicing animal assisted therapy in a very informal kind of way. She's used as a tool to achieve goals, but she's also part of a practice that's meaningful for both the kids and me. For kids that don't have a lot of fun in their lives or don't have a lot of positives, those 20 minutes or 15 minutes they're playing with the dog might be the highlight of their day or their week or whatever. Um, and it can stick with them. And it's um, a gift. It's really a gift and a privilege to be able to do this work.